This is the A Minute to Midnight show. Welcome. Today, this is Tony. And Brooke. And Joni. And it's great to have the three of us together. We've got a pretty important show today, and uh, I will throw it to Brooke and Joni to explain why. Okay, Tony. I guess I'll start with how it began. We're actually talking about um, a an open vision, a vision that Jose Polanco's nephew had. Um, first, he messaged he messaged Joni and I about something really extraordinary that happened in his life concerning his nephew one evening, and he asked me if he could send it the audio of it to to me because he actually grabbed his phone and audio recorded this. And I said, of course. And he asked, I knew he had sent it, tried, he was going to send it to Joni and he wanted to keep it between the minute to midnight team, the few of us, because it, it's just, it's very real. It's very raw. It's very personal to Jose. This is his 15-year-old, 16-year-old nephew, you have to understand, who was unsaved at the time of this. So he he sent it to me, and um, I began to listen to it. There's hardly really any words to explain it other than that there's a holy, reverent fear about it, basically. I, I didn't have any words. I called Joni. She had not received it yet. She couldn't. We were having trouble. I tried several different ways to send it. And I was basically stuck with it all day long, pondering upon it. Because when you listen to this, you cannot go about your day thinking about anything else. It gets deep inside your your spirit, your soul, every emotion. Uh, When he explains everything, you can feel what he's feeling and you can see what he's seeing if you just close your eyes and um Joni finally received it and and she called me of course and um I'm gonna let her discuss her feeling about it but basically I remember her saying I don't even want to touch this it's it's I don't even want to touch this there's no word we couldn't have a conversation about it we didn't have the words. I'm going to let her discuss, um, you know, how she felt about it. And then we can, what I can do is read a little bit. Uh, we had Jose write an intro because we did write an article and we transcribed this that we will release with the audio so people can either read it after or print it out or have people understanding it. They can follow along with it. And, um, and then we'll go from there. Well, when I finally got a chance to listen to it, I have to say I sat down, I listened to every bit of it, and I have to be honest that I have to say I had never heard anything like that before in my entire life. And the most compelling, penetrating aspect of the whole thing is this young man was unsaved. Now I know his family had been praying for him to be saved, but he was resistant to being saved. And it was inter- interesting uh, in in the regard that it was compelling is the Lord chose this 16 year old young man to convey a message. Now this message, uh, it's, it's, it's almost like Brooke was saying, it's very difficult to talk about. It's so, I, it's, it, it's like, I think it invokes fear and trembling. Mm-hmm. And I don't just say that lightly because a lot of people like to take Bible words and throw them around loosely. But truly, I couldn't even speak. I couldn't even talk about it. Brooke and I, I, I called her and I said, I don't even know, what to, mm-hmm. I can't even talk to you right now. I couldn't even speak about it for days. And we we want to say this, that it was very difficult for us to really come on and talk about it because the vision and the prophecy speak for itself. I mean, if, if anything, 
when I was listening to it, I thought this is like, this is like something that you read out of the Bible. I have never experienced something like that before in my entire life. It was 3D. Mm -hmm. Um, He was getting it in waves. Um, He was seeing detailed things like a movie in in front of him. Now, we're not going to let out what we saw. You're going to have to listen to it. The people are going to listen to it themselves. But I know that Brooke, you know, she's sitting here with me right now. Even before we came on today, we were just like, we don't even know what to say about it. It's it's something, you know, it's it's really a holy thing. And we again, we say that sensitively. We want to be sensitive Mm -hmm. with this vision. I think above any vision, I feel as far as it's come through Mm -hmm. to minute to midnight. Mm -hmm. We don't want to say too much before we put this out. We don't want it to be anyone focusing on this, on our words. What I will say before I read, what I'll do is I'll read a little bit of what Jose has to say in his introduction that we asked him to write. But basically, as Joni said, remember this little, this young man is unsaved. And what you're about to hear, all I'll say is it's the book of Revelation unfolding before a 16-year-old unsaved boy's eyes, and he was horrified, really, at the sight because he was not saved. But people, if you know the Bible and you know what's in the book and what will happen, now he knows, you know, he doesn't have to be to fear it. But just imagine if it was your child or your relative that was seeing this in real time. And, and and I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm going to read a little bit of Jose's introduction here, and then I'll give it back to Tony and we'll go from there. What Jose says is this. What you are about to read is one of the most extraordinary experiences that I, Jose Polanco, have ever encountered in my Christian life. Not a dream, not a sci-fi movie, not even a story out of a book. This was a real, raw, live experience of my 16-year-old nephew having visions in real time while he sat right before my eyes. Um, This began in May of 2016. Around May 20th, my wife and I were completely exhausted. We decided to go to bed early that night, and it didn't take us long before we were both sound asleep. Suddenly, at 11 p.m., I heard the distant sound of someone knocking very desperately on the front door. To my surprise, it was my sister accompanied by my nephew. He was in a state of shock and clearly crying as tears streamed down his face. She explained that he was having visions in real time and she did not know what to do with him. I took him into the bedroom, cast everyone out, locked the door for privacy. He goes on to explain a little bit more, but he ends in saying this, the depth of his vision were so were deeply extraordinary as he was looking upon things that I understand will happen during the tribulation period as prophesied in the book of Revelation. And Tony, we're going to leave it at that. And I'm going to give it back to you. And we're just going to let all the listeners um, marinate in what they're about to hear that they have probably as well never experienced before just just as us i i will add that when i heard the vision myself it was so profound it's like oh my gosh you just cannot get it out of your head it's one of those ones that probably stick with you for the rest of your life it's extraordinary listen were you sleeping were you awake Okay, so you were watching TV? Just staring at the clock. You were just staring at the clock? Okay. And what happened? As soon as it went to 12. Say that again? As soon as it went to 12, Uh I started seeing a lot of, like... (laughs) Horrible things. People 
what I did to each other to survive. I saw a lot of fire, a lot of blood. A lot. Not dried blood, but a lot of crimson blood. Okay. You were wide awake. Yes. It all hit me all of a sudden. People are crazy. Average people just... What you would think would be someone average would just come in. <laughs> they turn crazy. They're, they'd like start committing cannibalism. <laughs> and they would like offer to. They'd make human offerings to. <laughs> it's okay, buddy. <laughs> You good? How, how long you saw that for? I'm still seeing it. I'm still seeing it. Okay, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, Papa. You want to know what's going on? Huh? Wanna, huh? You know what we've been talking about? What I've been talking about with your mama for a very long time? God. It's greater than a war. It's. <laughs> I know, Papi. Listen to me, baby. There's gonna be something worse after the war. There's not gonna be anyone that's gonna win. People will claim victory, but it's not gonna be victory. It's not gonna be for fighting for good or bad. It's just gonna be killing. Just to kill. People are just going to start killing to kill. Not even to survive. They're just going to kill. For the satisfaction of killing. Like a sport. But see. God is allowing you to see the future, puppy. Because he wants you to understand that. That he is real. That everything that. That. We've been saying for a very long time is real. And God is real. He is a God of love, but He is also a God of judgment. <laughs> and what He does is He once when you when you look at the watch, right? You saw it twelve o'clock, you said, and then after that everything turns bad, <laughs> right? See what it is is that in in God's timing, okay? Uh, have you ever read where he says that that he will come like a thief in the middle of the night, but a thief at midnight? That means when God's time clock goes to twelve, he will get his bride. Oh! oh. But listen to me, baby. It's all true. It's all oh. true. Yes. I've always doubted. I've always doubted my whole life. Oh. Hey, but listen to me. Hey, listen to me, baby. He's not... Listen to me. Even if you doubt it, we all doubt at one point. But listen to me. God is real, regardless of who believes in Him or not. The only thing that we need to do is to be... To be close to him. Just ask him for for him to, to forgive our sins. Because when that time clock reaches 12 o'clock, papi, there is nothing that you and I or anybody could do. It that's that is long gone history. Do you understand? He he's not allowing you to see this because he wants you to be afraid. He wants you to be drawn near to him. I'm not afraid. I know. I'm crying for nothing. I'm crying for nothing. 
We're not whore. I'm freaking the last thing I am. I'm ready to do whatever I need to do. But and the things I say, the things I still am saying, it's so horrible. I don't understand why how a man, a woman, kids could do such horrors. How could what was simple living could so in such a little time turn into such a horrors? It's not. But. See, do you know how the, the problem that, that we all have is that at one point we allowed God out of this nation and once he has, he has completely, like, people have pushed him out of the way. Like, well, we don't want you here. We want the same say. We, we want right for everything. You know, not giving the fair chance of honor God in our of our ways. So he had no choice just to to leave men doing whatever is it that they're doing. So he's allowing you so you can see what's coming ahead. So you can be witness to other people, so you can get right with God. So you can actually, you know, do right for yourself, for your family, for others. The Bible says that our thoughts are not his thoughts and our ways are not his ways. That's why people don't understand. People don't get this. This is not, this is a spiritual war warfare. You Beware see. Beware the Catholic. Huh? Beware the Catholics. Beware of the Catholics? Why? The first word will come from them. Oh, wow. What do you mean by that, puppy? <laughs> the first word of war will come from them. Okay. <laughs> they will claim it's peace, <laughs> but it's just corruption. I know. <laughs> You're fine. Oh. oh my gosh, puppy. <laughs> it's all corruption. It's okay, I know. <laughs> you remember how we're getting ready to, to leave Florida? Do you see why we're making backpacks, emergency backpacks, and how we're getting things done so We're we going to need leave? a lot more than just food. I know, Papi, but we can only do what we can do. Remember. So we're packing up food. We're gathering the things that we need. Because, see, remember, the only thing that matters here is for you to be right with God. Because once you are in the safe zone with God, then he will take us. Do you understand? He's showing you what you're seeing because he does not want to leave us behind. That's all it is to it. It's, this is not about us. This is about us helping other people to get safe and understand the meaning of what true the true God and the true love of God is because he so loved the world that one day he sent his begotten son for, for us to be saved. And yet we pretend to know everything. We pretend that we got things figured out. But men, uh, men don't have a clue of anything. Oh no, they don't have a clue at all. We're going to make an advancement. That's not going to be good either with the nukes. Uh, uh, it's going to be a, a run for, for power of nukes. 
They're gonna run for TCU as the biggest and baddest weapon. They're gonna be running for the nukes. It's gonna... <laughs> Oh. You okay? It's gonna hit you hard, I know. Because remember, you probably had doubts before, but now you don't. Now you know God is real. He, God is a spiritual God. We live here, but inside here, there is a spiritual being that He created. And he, that spiritual being is called our soul. And that soul is, is dying to, to, to go to God, to hear, to yield yourself to God. But see, because we live in a, in a body that is completely carnal, he, the carnal mind that, that we, we once were draw us to to the things of the flesh and the world, but God does not want us to, to live like that. He wants to understand that He can come to us like the way He's doing to you right now. What He's doing, He's coming to you. He's showing things to your spirit because you're a spiritual being. You're not a human being. See, you're not a human being trying to live a a spiritual experience you are a spirit a soul that is living on a body do you understand that's why in the way the bible says that that we're 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 aliens in this world that society is what teaches us limitations i know because remember society has has rejected god that's where we're getting. But listen to me, Papa. The first thing that that I would suggest for you to do is to come to Jesus. Ask for Jesus to forgive your sins. Because that is that is the first thing that you do. Because once you do that, God is going to heal anything that he should. And he's going to create in you somebody completely different, wide awake to the spiritual world. Somebody who can actually control their, you know, your mind and your, all your, your, your car, carnal minded will, will eventually go away because you can defeat, you, you can defeat your body. You can def defeat whatever the devil tried to put in you, in your mind. So you can be close to God. He can show you anything he wants you to see. And it's always for the best. Tonight, God might show you the future like he did for you to save your family. And that's a really great thing, puppy. It's nothing wrong with that. It's nothing to be ashamed of that. God is just showing you the future. So you can understand that what what we've been talking is is, is something real. And that's all it is to it. He wants you to be drawn near to him. We're not perfect. I'm not perfect. Nobody is perfect. But that's why he died for us. So we can reach to him. And he will see us like. This is my son. This is my daughter. Because we believe in him. In the middle of darkness. In the middle of anything. Because he's a true and a real God. He's the God of Israel. You okay, Papa? You still seeing anything? What do you see? More that. More that. They're going after the churches, not just the churches, they're going for after people that believe in God. They're going to slaughter them mm -hmm. slowly and painfully. 
They're gonna prolong their death to the fullest extent. And there's a man watching and smiling while it all happens. And there's another man right next to him that's shorter. <laughs> They're both shadows. They're both shadows. They're watching it all happen. Is there any anybody that you recognize from the from this earth that you can name? Okay. I would never thought that you were gonna have this amazing experience, man. This is really I know it's tough, but it's really amazing things. You know, you wanna know something, puppy? Mm. Many, 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 like many years ago. I was sleeping and I left my body. And I remember that day I felt like I was in a dream. And and I started going down. And I started going down. And suddenly I was in a room which was like barely it was like dark but I could see the people people that I knew in that room and the people that I saw in that room were actually good people at the beginning I could not understand what was going on I just thought it was a dream but then then I start going down again and from a distance I could see this this ball of fire that was really 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 small I mean when I mean small it was just like like watching a light bulb and this thing started getting big as I speed up down. I was just going down like it was I was just going down, bro. Did it look like Did it look like a sideways eight when you reached the center? Well, what I saw and that I could remember, it was just like a light bulb that started getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. There was one point where I actually saw it start listening to people in hell. They were screaming. They were screaming. In and agony I, and in pain. Huh? They're screaming in agony and pain. Exactly. They're, to they're being tortured. Because they rejected God. Because they rejected Jesus. But I'm telling you my story. So... There was, I could not, there was a point, I never got to it. I was where a point where I was actually seeing everything and what was going on. And I could no longer take it. I started screaming, please get me out of here. Please get me out of here. I could smell everything. I could, I could see people, you know, I, I could, it was the most horrific experience that I ever had and immediately I felt at one point like if I was thrown back in my body and I woke up and I started shaking I started screaming and I knew that I was actually watching hell from a distance but see God didn't allow me for that to happen so I could just be scared of him he wants to draw us near to him he's showing us that Whatever is in the Bible is true. And that's all it is to it. And I'm really happy. And I know you're scared, but I'm really happy you do have this experience. Because it's going to help your family to be safe and get close to God. Especially you. Because God loves you and He loves all of us. His intentions are not for us to be afraid of what's coming. It's for us to prepare. To prepare. Because we we exactly don't know how far further into, into everything we might be before the rapture takes place. 
So we have no choice. The Bible says that no man knows the time of the hour. Nor even the angels of God knows the time of the hour of that day. So we can only prepare with the little bit that we have, knowing that time draws near. That everything that he said once it was going to happen, it's going to happen. But see, judgment are not for the children of God. He made a way for us to be saved. He only want us to believe. And it doesn't matter at the end because he's allowing his children. He's opened a door, a gateway for us to be saved. Whether we might see a war, maybe. Whether we might see a lot of sorrows, yes, we are. The Bible called this the beginning of birth pains, or birth pains. We are in the last days, whether we like it or not. So basically, the only thing we can do is just let go and let God guide us. That's why sometimes I get irritated or frustrated when I see that I don't see any reaction from people around me that I care and that I love. Because it don't matter. He's real. You know what I'm saying? So he don't want us to die in the middle of anything. He wants us to be safe. You okay? You feeling better? The vision stops. You want to pray? Not now. Not now? Okay. The volcanoes, a lot of them, are going to erupt the ring of fire. Because I see a deformed circle goes from Japan to like California, whole area. Mm -hmm. All that's gonna erupt. And then from there, there's gonna be new land formation, but it's not, it's not land, it's, it's, it's lava that's been molten. There's gonna be so much of it. So much lava is gonna be pouring out. You've seen a lot, puppy. People are going to die a lot and they're going to be sacrificing humans and animals to it. And it's not going to make it better. It's going to drive people insane and then they'll just accept it and start going crazy like I was looking earlier. It will stop eventually. But it's just gonna get worse from there. People are gonna keep getting crazier and start going for the sane. And from there, loot them, kill them, make tribes. And they're all savages. Ruled by no rule. There's no rules. <laughs> They're going to be tearing up animals alive and eat them from there. I'm seeing it. Goats. Sheep. Cats. Dogs. Cows. They're not going to hurt them. They're just going to straight up see. They see it. It's food. It's alive. It's moving. It's food. It won't matter what it is. Cannibalism will be common. It won't be something weird for them. If they need to resort to it, they'll just go. They'll just go and do it. Ugh. <sighs> Ugh. 
America's not going to have it good. America's going to be mainly made out of savages. And Asia's going to like all that whole area. They're going to be hell worshippers of some sort. They're going to be worshipping something, but it's not God. You mean in Asia? The whole area, Chinese, Asia, Japanese, they're going to be worshipping to their to their own gods. Mm-hmm. But they're not like hieroglyphic. They're going to be like real. They look real as if they were right there. <laughs> and they're not going to have their skin. It's different colors. It's going to look it's like their statues only come to life. <laughs> some of them are small, some of them are human size, and some of them are giants. That's all. <sighs> That's all. You see anything for America that you can remember? Savagery. And chaos. It's just average and chaos. There's not gonna be no worshipping here. It's all gonna be based on materialism. What we can have, what we can hold, and how can we can survive. And over there they're gonna mainly rely on their gods. Not so I saw. <sighs> Papi, you have seen more than I have seen in all my life. So you can probably feel pretty good. I wish I never saw this. But hey, Baba, listen to me. He only he only means good for you. Because now you can, you know what? Now your doubts, if you have oh any. Oh God, trust me, oh, oh God. Okay, <laughs> okay, so. See what I mean? Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I don't know. It's a really good thing, Papi. He don't want you to have any doubts. He want you to believe that he is a true God of Israel. He want you to, for us to understand that he is God above all things, and He love, uh, love us like nobody does. He's not going to allow for you or any of us to be in harm's way. That's why we are trying to do the best we can. The first thing that I wanted to do is to just get us out of Florida. And we know, we know that the time is short here. When it happens, it's all gonna happen at once. Like, event after event, from what I saw. Mm hmm. It's not gonna happen one thing first and then. It's all gonna happen. It's just gonna get worse and then worse. When you get time, if you want to, or we can pray now, but you should pray. And just talk to God and say, you know what? Forgive my sins. Forget any doubts. Forget any, forgive everything that I ever done in life that has put me in a position where maybe I'm not, you know, I'm maybe I'm not really, you know, the person or or, or that we all commit sin. That it's just life. But what he wants is just for us just to, to say for God to forgive us. He sent Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. And once, once we recognize that, once we, we say Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, which is the name for him in, in Hebrew, once we acknowledge that, then... 
He will forgive our sins. And we can be new persons, new people in God. That's why anything that happened to you today, probably you saw, he just wanted you to, to feel sure and rest assured that through him, all things can be done. And why do you came with the same shirt color that I have? <laughs> That's pretty amazing, man. You want some water? I'm hungry. You're, you're hungry? Yeah. It's very normal. I'm really hungry. Yeah. You want me to make you a sandwich, or what would you like? Taco Bell. You want Taco Bell? I, mean, I wasn't hungry when I had this. No, I'm really hungry. I know, because you're exhausted. See, every time that God shows us things, you're going to see that that we go through, through it's like to, through a warfare. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's something spiritual that, that we go through. And if you, if you ever see the Bible, every time that somebody got healed, every time that somebody came back from life, most of the time, the f one of the first things they say, they were hungry. Man, you just got healed. Are you hungry? Are you kidding me? So it's normal because it, it's, it's something that is a, spir a spiritual thing. We're going to get you whatever you want, puppy. But the main thing for you is to make sure that you get right with God. If you feel you are, then you're okay. I'm not. But then we need to pray. I need to pray. Hey, I'm here for you, puppy. Okay? And I know that you need to pray, babe. But I'm here with you. So I could be a witness of your salvation and I can show you how to pray. After that, God will be with you every single time. He just wants you to acknowledge Him. God has come to you like I have never seen anybody. What you have, man, it's just, a, just so amazing that I'm, believe it or not, I'm, I, I am in shock, man. Because you've seen a lot in one night. I've seen people seeing things. I have seen, <coughs> seen things. But you, you dropped the bomb, man. Oh. You want to pray now? Give me your hand. Dear God, you're going to repeat with me, okay? Can you do that, puppy? Father, Father, I come to you. I come to you. In the name, the name that is above, that is above every name, every name. In the name of Jesus Christ, the name of Jesus Christ. I come to you asking I come to you asking tonight tonight for forgiveness for forgiveness forget my sins forgive my sins forget forgive every sin that I willingly or unwillingly have done to you <laughs> forgive me for everything I've ever done against you and against anyone I've ever harmed, forgive, forgive me, and forgive all those that have committed sins against you, and against humanity, and against those they know, for that they don't know what they're doing. Oh, <laughs> And I, don't, and I don't know what I'm doing, but I am here telling you to forgive me.
<laughs> to help me forgive those I cannot forgive. And help me connect better with you. And help the people see what's true and what's not true. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> In Jesus' name, we pray, Father. <laughs> and we pray that his name is in the book of life in this hour. We pray that you cleanse him with your blood. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Thank you, Jesus. I'll go home, puppy. So there you have it. That was David's extraordinary vision and Jose Polanco um, navigating him through it. So we've already spoken in the intro how it impacted us and it sure did, didn't it? Even hearing it again, hey, what do you reckon, Joni and Brock? Hearing it again definitely has the same impact as when I heard it the first time. I, I'm i still speechless. Is I mean, what really can you say about it? It's God moving and revealing himself. I mean, it gets our attention more because it's not from somebody you would expect it to come from. And that's typically what God does when he really wants to get the attention of everybody. He will use something, somebody, nobody would ever expect. And that's what, it's like a sign. It's like David, in a sense, not to make him anything, but in a sense, he was like a sign to use that unsaved boy to say the things that he did. And, you know, again, I mean, uh, hearing it again, I'm never going to forget about it. It's just penetrating as much as hearing it now as it was then. So I'm pretty, you know, humbled and pretty quiet, going to remain pretty quiet about it, keep it in my in my mind, in my thoughts and prayers as I go on. I I'm sure you guys, Tony, I'm sure, Tony, I could speak for you and Joni. What I felt when Jose first sent this to me, I'm just remembering it now that you're speaking. I was, I was honored yeah. that we were the few people that he trusted, entrusted to send the audio of something so personal to us. Didn't you feel that way? You know, yeah, yeah. this is just something just that amazed me. It blessed me thoroughly. And, and it, and I also thanked God like, okay, what did I do to deserve to hear this? Do you know, it wasn't something just let out. You have to realize this was back in May. Um, we had to wait until, the Lord said, now is the time. And just to let the audience know, two weeks ago, around the, two weeks ago, the Lord said, this is it, get it out. And we knew soon, a minute to midnight, we'll be taking a little Christmas break. And it could not hold off until January. We knew that we knew this. We had already kind of spent a lot of time just in the few weeks with everything going on. But 
also, I just want to to ask the the audience and those who listen to um, just just please be respectful. Remember, this is only a sixteen year old boy. Some bits of it just kind of um, aren't fully maybe explained. Um, some bits uh, just kind of cut off, and and. And some of you may may think for, you know, a few parts, maybe a few parts like, OK, well, kind of what, what did that mean? But, you know, you know, he, he explained it as best as he could for his age and for something that he had never seen or experienced before. You have to understand this is just a young, unsaved man who saw blood, crimson blood and and death and dying and cannibalism. My goodness. So, um. If you have any questions, um, just just anything you'd like to ask us, you're welcome to email us or if you're in the group, just ask us. Just ask us. Just be kind and be respectful of it because um, it's obviously it's obviously something that that meant enough to the Lord that that he that this would happen to this young boy. And let me also say that this 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 boy, <laughs> this young man. Or I think I think Jose, if I'm I'm correct, I around 40 minutes before he showed up, before he arrived at Jose's house, this was going on at at his own home with him and his mother, and that's why Jose's sister showed up with her son. She didn't know what to do with him anymore. He was that distraught, and he just kept seeing these things, and she knew to take him to Jose. And another thing is Jose told me, he said, I have never ever recorded anything in my life. He said, I've never even done it. Mm -hmm. He said, I don't even know why I, he goes, I just grabbed my cell phone and I don't know what something just in me said, you got to record this. The Lord. Definitely the Lord. And he said, I don't know why I have never done this before in my entire life. I don't know why I just did it. And there was a reason why he did it, you know, and like what Brooke was saying, look, it's a 16 year old kid. His, you know, vocabulary mm -hmm. is going to be from a young guy, his, his age. And, but I have to say, I was pretty, pretty impressed because mm -hmm. obviously he was saying things like about the ring of fire. Later on, Jose told me, he said, after that vision and he calmed down. Jose asked him, he said, do you even know what the ring of fire is? And he said, no. He wow. never even knew about that there was anything. He goes, I don't even know what that is. Right. Remember? So that was like, you know how the Lord was obviously revealing all. He knew, he knew what to name it. He knew it was called the ring of fire. He had no idea what that was. No idea. Jose had to explain all these things. So um, I, I hope everyone just treats it with, with just a respect and 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 take it to the Lord. Just just take everything to the Lord. Um, I think you will feel. Most of you, majority of you, will feel like we did when when you listen to it, and it's going to stay with you. And you will probably listen to it more than once, and you will hear in His voice. That, um, you know, this is no um, Oscar award winning 16 year old boy. It's coming straight from his heart and straight from what he sees. And, you know, I do want to say one last thing. You know, I've been around a long time and I could say like when I get an open vision and the people that I know do the same thing, it's never it's never around other people. It's very private. Everybody needs to consider that because getting a really powerful vision like that, that doesn't happen. This never happens in public. Most 16 year old boys would never let us put this out to the world. Yes, we know he did get saved that night, but you understand that he is 16. You know, he risks, hey, some of my friends may hear this. Mm -hmm. Uh, that don't know about it, you know, he he risks getting persecuted and mocked and scoffed at. We don't know how far the Lord's going to take this. I'm sure it will 
you know, we've prayed about it. I'm, I'm sure God has plans for it. It will probably keep going for a long time. It'll reach a lot of places. We have a lot of listeners in all over the four corners of the world. Listen, so how amazing that David's okay with, with us doing this. He trusts. He, he trusts God. He trusts us with this. Jose trusts us with this. Um, it, it's just really a blessing. And, and we thank you. We thank you, Jose. We know you're listening. We yeah, love Jose, you. Thank you. We appreciate the time you spent doing this. You worked so hard. And uh, while you're moving, um, you have been just such a blessing. And, and we truly love you. Jose, by the way, guys, if some of the listeners don't know, he is one of our contributing writers. He um, has been very busy the last several months, has, has not been able to write as much, but hopefully when he settles down, he will be able to give us some more of his dreams or, um, or his articles because he does great work and he's such a blessing to all those who know him. I just want to say, um, apologize for uh, a bit of the Skype breaking up there, people. Unfortunately, it's just one of the things that happens sometimes. And um, but remember too, there is actually a transcript. We've supplied a transcript of this vision on the Minute to Midnight website, so you can actually read the vision as well as hearing it. If you want to uh, have a copy of it, it'll be there. So yeah, it was definitely a profound moment, I think, for all of us. The first time and the second time <laughs> and subsequent times we've actually listened to that. It's like it's powerful. You you don't forget it that's for sure well it's been great um, having the three of us just briefly on um, today Brooke and Joni um, it's great to see you two together and uh, so folks remember the a minute to midnight.com website for our articles and all our shows there and we don't advertise on our YouTube videos we don't believe God wants us to use advertising in any way shape or form so we do rely on donations to keep a minute to midnight running so we appreciate those people that do help us by donating to the the website and to keep the a minute to midnight show running so that's at a minute to midnight.com and we've got the facebook group which we're all part of and brooke here does a great job of running it and Joni, yeah, and, and Joni is often <laughs> contributing in there too. So yeah, we love the Facebook group and all the people in it. So feel free to join it. And uh, of course, I, I always say that I put all the music that's in our shows as me playing and recording and writing all the music. So you can find my music at rockshawsounds.com and there's a link to that on the A Minute to Midnight website. So I think that's about it. So uh, this is Tony signing off. And Brooke. And Joni. Catch you in the next episode.